tonight on Border Security International. It looks tampered with. Here it is. We're acting uncharacteristic of normal travelers coming through our border. I'm pretty pissed off. What did you do? Looked like he basically just skipped on the bail, and now he's a fugitive on the run. Seems like he's getting arrested. Thousands of travellers arrive at Vancouver International Airport every day. Customs officers connect with as many as possible. You're here visiting for 24 days. Are you traveling okay. together? You did Vancouver, Stockholm? Do you have that passport with you? This American traveller claims he's been living in the Philippines for two years. Now he's arriving in Canada with some ambitious travel plans. On his declaration card, he said he's staying for 264 days, which is already over the maximum amount you can stay in Canada. So already has raised some red flags right off the bat. And what were you doing in the Philippines? I was, uh... Performing. What kind of performing do you do? I'm a mechanical statue. Mechanical statue? Yeah. OK. Can you kind of describe to me what that is? How I perform in the local parks and stuff like that. As like a busker kind of thing? Yeah. So can you explain to me what you're going to be doing exactly in Canada then? I want to make arrangements to meet with the guy to build my robot suit. You're going to build a robot suit? Yeah. It's going to be made out of fiberglass. Fiberglass, OK. And I'm going to put lights in it. How would you find this guy? Internet. Do you have his uh, phone number? Uh, yes. Right here. OK. And the robot guy is in Quebec. In so Quebec. Quebec is on the other side of Canada. I did not know that. Once we start talking, I start to notice that he's very inconsistent with what he's saying. You're just basically just going to hang out in Vancouver? Yeah, yes, just for a couple of days. Just for a couple of days. Yeah. Buy a bus ticket. First, he's saying he's staying for 260 days. Then he changed his answer to two or three days. His story didn't even make sense. At the land crossing, an American bus passenger heading to Vancouver has been pulled aside for a secondary examination. I was observing him as he walked up to the primary officer at the bus, and he said it was his first time in Canada. A lot of the times, we like to select those people to make sure they don't have a criminal history. When someone comes into Canada, we check their criminal background, if they have any or not. And if they do, then we have to look at it and see if it equates to Canada. What? Officer Shannon has already run a background check on the traveler. Do you want to tell me what's happened with you? What do you mean? I have it here. So, 99, you had some charges right, of disorderly conduct. Disorderly conduct? Uh, I can't even remember when that was. I'm sorry. I really can't recall. It's been how long? More than 10 years. All right, well, we're going to let this bus go and make our determination. You can catch the next wow. bus if it's a possibility, OK? We're not going to hold this bus up any longer. The thing is, if you can't remember, then you may not be admissible into Canada. At the air cargo facility in Vancouver, officers screen inbound freight from around the world. Running x-ray to determine if there's any contraband in them. Today, a suspicious package from China has caught Officer David's eye. So what we're seeing is some inconsistency. It doesn't appear to be what it's declared as. So we'll bring it out. It turns out to be a water heater, which has lots of space inside to put contraband. It looks like there's a couple screws that have been removed and not replaced. So if this thing was brand new and hadn't been tampered with, the screws should be of the same color, or the exact same screws, but they're not. A lot of the appliances that we get that have contraband in them, they've actually glued to make it even more difficult for us to access it. So I'm going to try to pry it. Someone went to a lot of trouble to conceal what's inside. There it is. Yeah. Back at the terminal, this street performer says he's on his way to Quebec to buy a new costume for his act. Quebec is on the other side of Canada. I did not know that. The traveler's inconsistent story has Officer Attila digging deeper. So is that six cents? Is that what uh, that is? Yeah. OK, so you have six cents left in your bank account. Yeah. He doesn't have any money with him. He's got all of his work equipment with him. So all your makeup's in here? Yeah. The whole costume's in here. It's from the robot? Yeah, one of them. 
At this point, I'm suspecting that he's actually coming to work. Are you going to do your performance in Canada? Oh, I have no idea. Seems like I'm getting arrested. At the land border... Just pull forward as far as you can, sir. Drivers selected for secondary examination must park their vehicle and report immediately to the waiting area inside the customs building. Just want to step on out for me. It's a security measure that officers take very seriously. This visitor from Washington State is about to find out why. He was rifling through the trunk of the vehicle. I mean, he had uh, changed his shoes. So I came out, approached the individual. He was agitated, um, a little bit high strung. At that point, I called for my partner to come out, and uh, we did a pocket examination to make sure he didn't have any weapons on him. Went to his trunk before coming to the office, which we take as a very serious thing. It could be a weapon he's trying to pull out of the vehicle to bring in the office and possibly create some havoc. As we uh, cleared him and sent him inside, he had uh, then got a bit more agitated. I'm pretty pissed off. If you're not going to cooperate, you can go back home. I'd rather just go right through. You're acting uncharacteristic of normal travelers coming through our border. You're a foreign national. You don't enter Canada by right. You go through an examination to enter Canada. And when we see somebody get sent into our secondary, and the first thing they do is go to the trunk, I'm looking for them to pull out a weapon and come in here and do damage. Sure. That concerns me, OK? I'm a good guy. And I don't know that until I check, OK? A bus headed to Vancouver is leaving with one less passenger. The thing is, if you can't remember, then we can't allow you entry. A background check reveals this American traveler has had some brushes with the law. I tried to get some details out of him as far as the charges go, but he's rather vague right now. We have so many details that, that she's looking at right now, and we need you to fill in the gaps. I would love to. I mean, I just can't remember that moment in time. I mean, I've done a lot <laughs> since that time. It was 99. 99, uh... Pinellas County? Ah, uh, yes, OK. Oh, what happened? Uh, I moved somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I moved somebody. At the air cargo facility in Vancouver, a suspicious water heater shipped from China has a secret hidden inside. It looked like there was some organic matter. Looks tampered with. There it is. Yeah. It's loaded. So we don't ingest anything. We're going to wear masks till we get the stuff out. Wow. Here we go. Each one seems to have TE on it. Based on previous experience, I believe it's some type of testosterone. It's never ending. At the airport... Quebec is on the other side of Canada. I did not know that. This traveler seems to be nervous about being examined. Seems like I'm getting arrested. Officer Attila suspects there's more to this man's story than he's admitting. So have you ever been arrested for anything in your life? In uh, the US, yes. Yeah, OK, what have you been arrested for? Traffic tickets. I went to prison for, uh, uh, what do you call that? Messing with little kids. OK, so sexual offenses? Yes, that's one, okay. one sex offense. I went to prison for it. OK. How long were you in prison for? Uh, four or five years. Four or five years for one offense? One offense. What was the circumstances? I was accused of letting a girl touch me. How old was the girl? Uh, I think five. When did you get out of prison? What year? That, I don't know that date. Correct me if I'm mistaken. But are you currently a registered sex offender? Yes. Customs officers deal with visitors from all over the world. One challenge is determining whether a traveler is being evasive or simply at a loss for words. Passport declaration card? Passport. Where? Where? You in. Officer Danielle has pulled aside a German tourist who's having trouble communicating his travel plans. My initial concerns with this traveler is the fact that uh, when I first approached him, he wasn't sure where he was going. The purpose of your trip here is? Cost a visit, visit the girl. OK, so you visit the girl. 
Oh, very nice. Yes. Have you been to Canada before? No, never. Never. What are you going to do while you're here? This girl. Okay, you're going to see the girl. What else? <laughs> and the city, the ocean, the girl and the ocean, not more. <laughs> There's still some question in terms of what he's going to be doing while he's here in Canada. He's not really sure about his plans. What's your girlfriend's name? What's her name? Crystal. Crystal. How did you meet Crystal? How? Yeah. Why I meet her? Oh, like how did you meet her? Did you meet her in Germany? Did you meet oh, her no, in Mexi Vancouver? Mexico. In Mexico. And then I meet her. We have a little bit of time together. And then she say, come visit me. I say, yes, I visit you. What uh, does your girlfriend do for work? Girlfriend, oh, she works in she works in a, in a Chinese restaurant. That's here. <laughs> What's the word? No word. She's a waitress. Yes, waitress. Yes. Okay. Right now, I'm 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 looking primarily if he plans to be returning back uh, to Germany. At the land border, this cheeky American traveler comes clean about his criminal past. Uh, I'm moving somebody. <laughs> I'm moving somebody. There has to be more to no, this story. I... Did you know this person? No, I didn't know him at all. So it how did just... you guys even get to talking? I work for a magazine crew. Uh, we go door to door, uh, sell magazines. Just knocked on his door, started badgering me, bad mouthing me. I, he told him to quit talking to me. You know, I don't want to hear you. Yeah, okay. and then I walked off of his property. I'm in the street, and then. You know, what I did happen. So you moved him? Yeah, all, off of his property, and I kept walking, and that's when the police came up to me and said, hey, can you apologize to this gentleman? And I said, no. So you didn't apologize? Yeah, I didn't. I went to jail for it. Well, you've helped me a lot more now. All right. You're giving me a lot more information. Well, you, you gave me a lot more to jog my memory. OK. Now, officers must determine whether Canadian law considers mooning a serious charge or just a bum rap. I'm in trouble. Disorderly conduct and mooning somebody doesn't equate to Canadian criminal code. Based on the information you've been able to give me now, and I look at our Canadian criminal code, you're OK to come in. The chair's over there. You can have a seat. And we might be able to get you on the next bus here, okay? I appreciate you. Yes, I was worried that I would not be let into Canada for a second, but uh, we had a nice conversation. I was able to uh, talk it out with the officers, and they understood. At Air Cargo, a water heater from China is packed with bags of white powder. It's never ending. Nope. Officers believe the TE on the bags stands for testosterone. It appears to be steroids. And look at this. You can never imagine that you could actually get this much stuff out of here. It's astounding, the sheer volume of all this powder. They're very good at what they do. And as you can see by the volume, there's a lot of contraband in that little tank. So now we're just going to weigh and see exactly what kind of volume we have. Lucrative if they get through. It would be worth a fair amount on the street. Uh, we ended up with 3.15 kilos of suspected uh, steroids in this shipment. So we'll send it to the lab for final outcome, and then we'll go from there. At the Pacific Highway crossing, this traveler's unusual behavior is raising red flags. Once referred in from primary there, he was rifling through the trunk of the vehicle. And he had uh, changed his shoes. And he's not happy about being examined. I'm pissed off. You're not a Canadian citizen. Sure. You're not a permanent resident of Canada. We let you in by privilege. Sure. So we have to search you. Why would somebody change their shoes before they come in here? Because my shoes look like Why do you have this anger towards us? You don't want to get searched? Well, the thing is, I, I, I told her I'd be at her house at 4 o'clock. Traveler's coming from Bellevue, Washington. Explained he's coming up here to visit his girlfriend for, uh, for New Year's. Go ahead and uh, grab your jacket and go ahead and have a seat, all right? We're just going to run through the vehicle, make sure there's no contraband, uh, weapons, firearms. These are shoes he changed out of? Yeah, he changed out of shoes. Go ahead and check the soles of that, make sure uh, he's got nothing hidden in there. All right now, we're entering through the car here, and uh, so far, things uh, seem to be normal. And we'll uh, contact his Canadian reception here to see if his story is legit.
This American street performer has come to Vancouver after spending two years in the Philippines. Are you currently a registered sex offender? Yes. Officer Attila runs a background check to see if there's more to the traveler's sordid past. I was talking to the guy out there. Mm -hmm. He said that he spent uh, four to five years in prison for uh, sexual offenses involving a five-year-old child. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, when did you actually get out of jail? And he's like, I don't even know. Like, okay. he couldn't even name me the year. Which makes absolutely no sense. Exactly. I found no criminal record for him. But then under the wants and warrants sections, I found that he's wanted out of Nevada. He's got three counts that he's wanted on. And it didn't happen 10 years ago. It happened in 2010. Seems like the warrants were issued, he posted bond, and just basically took off. It all matches up with the timeline, though, because he said he went to the Philippines two years ago. So it could have just, it looked like he paid $30,000 bail mm -hmm. and basically just skipped on the bail. Now he's a fugitive on the run. At the airport, a German traveler has come to reunite with a Canadian girl named Crystal. And then I meet her, we have a little time together, and then she said, come, visit me, I say yes, I'll visit you. But Officer Danielle wants to make sure this romantic rendezvous isn't permanent. Now, any plans on staying in Canada for longer? Oh, I must work. You gotta be back to work. Yes, I must work, that's a good company. Because that's the other thing, right? Sometimes people come here, they stay longer. Did you pack these bags yes, yourself? Yes, yes, yes. Do you know everything that's in the bags? Yes. All right, so you can come on over and pack this stuff back up. Okay. All okay or give us a problem? Is it okay? You think okay? it's okay? Yeah. It's That's okay. Nothing, what is wrong, Laura? No, nothing's wrong. The traveler is free to reunite with his girlfriend, Crystal. <laughs> Everybody think a young man has drugs or other things. Look, oh, we have crystal meth or, or drugs. Or... Do you ever have crystal meth? No. No? <laughs> I have crystal, but not meth. At this point, there's no concerns that he's got his return ticket, um, and I'm satisfied that he's gonna be here for the two weeks, and then he'll be returning back to Germany. And you can meet Crystal, and good luck. I think Canada is very friendly. Germany, the people, the people are not so optimistic. She more, mm, mm. So Canadians are very happy. <laughs> At the land crossing, this American didn't follow the border protocol after he was selected for a secondary examination. He went to his trunk before coming to the office, which we take as a very serious thing. While officers search his vehicle, the traveler decides to entertain himself. Supposedly I'm being really aggressive. I got nothing to do, so I'm making paper airplanes out of pamphlets. I don't know what to say. The search turns up nothing, Good. but Officer Mike isn't done yet. There's still some anomalies in his story as far as who's coming up here to see. See, so you're making paper airplanes. Uh, I've been here about three hours. Three hours? That might be a little bit of exaggeration. I've been here three hours, but I know he's protecting Canada. He's a good guy. Thank you. Hey, where are you staying at tonight? Actually, I'm renting a room from somebody. OK, how do you know the somebody? I rented a room last time from them. OK. I met him on Craigslist. Will your girlfriend be staying with you at this suite? <laughs> Oh, geez, the camera's on. She probably will. OK. Depends she, she if, stayed uh, before? Depends if I say the right things tonight. OK. You said the right things in the past? Yes. OK, very good. Officer Mike calls the traveler's Canadian girlfriend. Hi, this is Officer with uh, Canada Border Services Agency. Are you expecting a uh, US uh, visitor today? Now we just want to verify his story and what he's told us. We call the girlfriend. Uh, make sure that's legit. I found out where he was staying. After uh, running the checks, and I saw that he had no criminal record, no issues with the law. So yeah, that was enough for me to uh, release him into Canada today. We talked. Everything is confirmed as far as how you said it. Was she surprised? You can tell. No, she wasn't surprised. She confirmed that you guys are staying at the uh, place that you rented. Huh. So there you have it. And uh, for the record, you got referred in at 2.45. It's been an hour and a half. I'm free to go? You are free to go, sir. Mm -hmm. I probably will not come back to Canada, but I just might because my girlfriend's very beautiful and she's nice.
This street performer is wanted in the United States for sexual offenses involving a child. It looked like he paid thirty thousand dollars bail mm -hmm. and basically just skipped on the bail. And now he's a baby. Now he's a fugitive on the run. The alleged sex offender will not be entering Canada anytime soon. So what's going to happen is we're going to be returning you to the U.S. today, and the form of that is we're just going to drive you straight to the border. Okay, spread your feet apart. Okay, both hands behind your back. Interlock your fingers. Okay, look to your left. He is being detained because we have to take extra measures to make sure that he is within our care and control while we remove him back to the USA. Officers have contacted US authorities in order to hand over the traveler at the border crossing. We're doing our job by protecting the border and we're physically actually removing him from our country. So he's not out to harm any kids here. Next on Border Security International. You had some problems with law enforcement? Oh, yeah. I'm on probation. You can smell a lot of chemicals in it. Looks like to be something inside. You open this bag, lime green rope huh? with that key, but it's not your bag. That's Border Security International.